we're on, I think. Is it? Oh, yeah. You're just going to have to give me a thumbs up. No, cool. Yeah, great. Less technical issue tonight. And uh, we've got our angle bracket to carry on working on. So that's great. So I have a bit of catching up to do. Been distracted with other things this week. Hello. And if you're there, we're going to be on working with this angle bracket. Now, it's a bit of a challenge, this one is, because we've got a dovetail and two mortise and tenons. And I've chosen some challenging mortises, mortise and tenons that are going to be at an angle. And uh, I'll try and have these up for next week. So if anyone actually wants to try and do this yourselves, that'd be great. Let me know how you get on. It'd be really good to see how you get on with that. That'd be terrific. All right. So let me carry on working through this and I'll talk you through it. So as far as we got last week was to set up our cuts for our mortise and tenon. So let's get a look from the top and we'll go uh, a re-catch up. And um, that sounds good. The mud to I've been told the mic is good. It says good news. And I should have a sharp pencil. So I'm getting my sharp pencil and I will sharpen it in a moment. But where we were last week was we were working off our working document, a working drawing. Always have this out in front of you. It's a super help. We've got our face on the inside and we've got our edge up here. That's what we want. And we have our bracket looking like that one as well. And now we're going to put this in here. But here's our face side. So I've got to put this the same way. So that's actually my face. So I might write top up here, not tor, top and bottom. Bottom. On there. And with this one, I'm going to cut the bottom one out first. So with this one, I'm actually going to cut the tenon first before I cut my mortise and then I'll get this marked up. Now the tenon, the way someone told me to think about it was the mortise uh, houses the tenon. The tenon is the tenant that goes into the mortise. So I've marked this up last week and I'm going to cut this down so that we have shoulders all the way around and a small bit of a Ten and then sticking in there, and we're still going with the affordable tools, which is I quite like this. It's 12 teeth per inch, and it's a Magnuson. Get that out of out of screw fix or Wix or any of those places, and it's quite good. Now, on this one. I'm going to get this in the bench vise. Definitely cutting the right one. Yes. And I'm going to cut everything down before I cut my shoulders. So I have it in place there. That's straight on. And let's get my... We can go from front for a moment. We can go to... I went a little out with that one. That's going to be fairly straight. What I'm doing is I'm putting this line so that it's square off the bench, or basically it's plumb, so it's straight down. That's easier way to cut, that the saw just falls straight. If you're trying to cut at an angle, it's a bit awkward. So we're aiming to get it as good as we can on our first cut. But obviously, if you're new to it, You'd be practicing a number of times. Right, I'm going to cut this one down. I'm going to get a kerf in there first. That's a bit awkward to get in. And a reminder, the kerf is the bit that's cut out. So I can see it on my line here. I need to get down my knees. And I'm going to cut this line here. Now, you won't see that till I turn it around. I just want to get a line there close to my line on the waist side 
Need to bring that out a bit. Normally you get this fairly down, uh, close down to the vice, but because I'm trying to do it at a slight angle, it's got to be up high, and it's fairly stable in there anyway. Right, let's get that one cut out. Let's do our kerf cut here. If you struggle with this, what you can do is you could turn it over, cut a little, or chisel that bit out. Then it'll give you something to rest the saw on. Check the other side. Great. That's going over there a little. Was thinking random thoughts going through my head if um, if there was anyone that is in London and wants to be on and wants a lesson drop us a note and we'll take you through some basic principles here in the workshop and promote your own channel I quite like getting into this um, YouTube, which is a new venture. Right, bit dusty. And anytime, whenever this is on, if you've got questions, put them in the comments. It'd be really helpful. I'll try and get back to you and uh, answer them. Right, so I've cut down my kerf lines here. So when I come to cut them all the way down, they'll be hopefully straight. I'll keep that camera on the front because what I'll do now is I'll cut the other lines down. So I'm cutting them all here first and prepping this lot. And it's in three stages. Uh, the first one is along the top. Because we're doing this one at an angle. Yeah, you're going to see that there. Let me do it on this one as well. Here, there. Oh, that's all there. Yeah, that's still okie dokie. <laughs> I rather go slow ish, certainly with hand tools, any things. And because even though you might be going a little slow, it might seem slower, but then you only do it the once. Whereas if you rush it, you tend to make mistakes. You gotta just be steady. But it definitely takes the concentration. Which is one of the reasons woodwork is uh, so appealing. Because you get lost in it. That's the vice. It's not great. And uh, since I'm on that, why are you interested in woodwork? If, and, and, and is it for DIY projects? or change career I'm always asking my students that at the beginning I'd like to know it's helpful right stay on that one flip it And instead of me getting down, I could do this from up here. But I am wearing knee pads. In there. And uh, this workshop was cold. Still is a little. But I'm actually pretty warm now. So. So 
that's another good thing. It saves you on the heating bills. Cheapskate. Right. Now, this is going to be one to go for. I'm going to cut this and I'm going to keep that a bit high. I'm going to try and keep the line I'm going to horizontal. So I'm going to put that scrap timber in there, tighten that up so that I can keep my saw horizontal on this. Um, the joy of editing is you could speed this up, couldn't you? You wouldn't have to watch it. But that's part of this reason I'm doing this one is the reality of it. And it's probably why a lot of people don't do much with hand tools anymore. It is time consuming. Certainly when it's um, work related and you're, you want to speed it up, you'd use your power tools. But if you're studying this, it's part of the exams. You have to complete them by hand. You have to be able to complete it by hand. And that's really just to demonstrate that it takes time. I'll stop saying that. I said it nothing. Am I on that line? Yes, good. Still in there. Oh, go in there. That's good. Now we get back to that one. Try not to go beyond it. There we go. I put that. This one. We're looking close. Yep, there we go. Superb. Superb. Right. So I've cut through on those. I see off the top. I'm purposely leaving. Purposely leaving all these waste bits on because I can see the lines all the way around. So I'm cutting this all down. So I've cut down the bits that are going to come out here. All those. And then I'll cut through here. I'll be left with a nice tenon. Time-wise, the marking out takes quite a bit of time relative to cutting. And it's worth focusing on the time to mark out. Because if you've got it marked out right and you can cut, well, it should be right. But if you've marked it out wrong, you're just cutting it wrong. So definitely spend time. And the marking out because it often gets ignored, and that's where the errors happen. Terrific. You're there, and you're there. Nice. Forward to this to see them drop away. Okay, let's check this out from the front. So I would put my timber in here straight up, and now I want to cut this line. Quite often I get people and they're cutting it at that angle. Again, we don't. The line you're cutting make that plumb. So that your saw cuts are straight down. I'm going to cut a little further on the wayside so as I can clean this up with a sharp chisel afterwards. If I try and cut too close to the line, I'll end up going over and messing it up. Do not 
on that side, I want to get that over here. Really watch that line. Okay, good. That's a bit better. Bye. Nice. How am I going to do that one? Up there. Right, and you get. I was going to say something, but it went right out of my head. See, I've gone off there a bit. That'll have to come out with the chisel. That's a bit of an awkward angle. And if you wanted wedges, actually, I'll keep those. Because I might want. Keep your bits, Timber. We might want wedges. They'll be the right size for it. We can pair those down. Smashing. Now, this one, you just have to cut it at an angle. I could put it in a bench hook, which is um, this one. I could put that in the bench hook, but I'll have to hold it. So put it in the vise, in the bench vise, pop it in there. So I can see that from up there. So if that's in the bench vise, that timber was split already, but that's what we get. And we will then cut it down and we'll get to the side of it and cut it. You don't always have to be in front, straight in front of it. Right. Okay. You still there? That's there on me. That's low. That's good. That should be out. You need a bit more off of that one. Great. And this one, we're going to walk around the other side. There we go. So, the weather is always a good topic, isn't it? Um, here in London, we're going to have a nice weather today, the last couple of days. Now, the thing with the tenon saw is the metal strip at the back here. Keep that saw steady. And But if you do start going up the uh, money bracket, the uh, Spear and Jackson, that's got a, um, a brass back on it. And that's much heavier than this, this one. And that's really nice to use. Wooden handle, really sharpenable blade, good weight. That will last a lifetime. This is disposable. When that gets blunt, out it goes. Buy a new one. He's not there. But that's only justifiable if you um, are getting into them. All right, let's get a look at that up top. 
and um, I'll start to clean it out. But we need a good set of well, sharp chisels, just sharp chisels. So I'm going to sharpen that up and get these little corners cleaned out, and that'll be nice. Pop it in there. I'm going to use as wide a chisel as I possibly can. That's good news. As wide a chisel as I possibly can. So that's a 38 mil. But this is um, a bevel edge chisel. It's a draper, part of a set. I think they're 30 quid for that set. So that's relatively affordable if you're getting into it. And it's certainly good for the carpentry. It's a nice hard case. But um, this will do the job lovely now. And um, the thing with chisels, always, always hands behind the blade. Too many times people holding that thing and just it if it's gonna cut through wood, it's gonna cut through fingers. Right. See, I'm doing this with affordable tools. So we do not have luxury of anything other than a saw chisel and sandpaper because and that's it but if you did go up the money bracket and you want to do this um, more professionally not as a beginner but this is towards beginners you would be doing it and you'd have specialist planes to clean these out but they are expensive and i didn't get them when i started and even at that, I just never use them. But when you get into the hand tools more, that's an option. Right, tighten you up there so that we get all our edges down to that angle there. Now we don't have to clean it up too much now because we're only going to offer it up to where the mortise is going in a few minutes and um, where we're going to cut out the mortise. So for now, we're going to keep it rough. Well, I say rough. I'm just keeping it simple. And then we will do a mark out one of our mortises. Out you go. This is the joy of a bevel edge chisel it's for getting into acute angles that's what bevel edge chisels do acute angle is an angle less than 90 degrees little cute angle they talk like that <laughs> if they talk um so let's check this out All right, so that's the bottom. That's going to go up against that. And that one's going to hit that one. Oh, my head's in the way. So this is going to go through here. So I'll mark this out in a little. But first, we're now going to have to cut down all the sides to this one, to the top. Now, if you actually think about it, if we tried to squeeze this one in here, this would go in. And if we had all our angles going out there, there's no way we'd get that on and a dovetail. So we're going to actually have to take off the dovetail, take that piece off, put this one in, and then this will have to come straight down. And that's why on our working document, this has a straight edge along here. And that will make more sense when we cut it out look a lot more uh, sensible then. I don't need no feedback, uh, but that's going to go and get my head in there because is that the same width? Yes, it is. So if I put that up to there and run that across, I know that that's going to be my line. And what I want to do is get a 45 on this. So I'm looking for 
Nah, I, I'm looking for my um, saying nah there because I can. Um, uh, I, 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 we better just this one. So 45, 45, 45 degrees. That's going to hit there, and that's going to come down on that one, which is all good. Right there, 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 there. there. I'll run that one up there. So it won't be much of a tenon, but it actually will be fine. Wouldn't, wouldn't even bother. Um, but no, uh, it, it is. Right. Let's see which one of these are we going to cut down now. So I think they're dandy doing that from the top. Now, it'll be lovely to be able to um cut to something else but they can't so let's double check this we're cutting down to that one all the way around we're cutting down along those and that one so the same thing we have all our lines here it is not a rush job not something you can do in a hurry uh let's have a think now uh you know what actually won't even, yeah. Uh, I was just having a word and saying, are those headphones going to work? But they won't. And you'd be wondering, what the hell am I talking about headphones? So, um, whoa, we're doing a sound check, but they won't be any good. Um, so let's cut this on the waist up here. Oh, I want to see that closely there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, extra cuts. Good. So while I have it up, I'm gonna try to do all my cuts here. And have a go at that. If there's anyone that has um, put documents on their website before that are shared, where you have to go and put in your name, and then you can download the document, put it in the comments. Because I have to work that out. So I can put a copy of that drawing on it. So you can work on the drawing that I'm doing. And this would be a, a nice bracket to work on to challenge yourself for a beginner. Not an absolute beginner. And let's get that one in there. I'm starting off here at a slight angle so I can level it out. So that's a bit of a line on each of those tops. Now I'll tilt the timber so that when you're looking at it from the top, that's good from the top. When you're looking at that, I don't have to get down on my knees. I can then cut down here. I can see that curve line and now I'm going to cut down here. And what's the matter? I'm going to do both sides, both outsides. And put it in a bit steeper. This goes in there. I keep having to get that dust out of the way. If you can't see what you're doing, you're definitely not going to get it. So blow that stuff out of the way, get it out of the way. That's that line. That's that one. Knock that round. This one's a lot longer. It's a lot longer further down. I'd forgotten about that because it's not a not a, at a ninety degrees angle, is it? I, I need to change one. 
There we go. Let's get this over there. Might want to check that out from the front. Just to vary it. Okay, so we're getting that down there. Washing our line. Now I need to come down here a little bit more. Trying to use the whole length or as much length of the saw you can as well. Not little bits like that as you're near the end. Might as well use the blade once it's in there. It's not going to jump out at that stage. It shouldn't anyway. But when you're starting out, you can do it small because blades do hop out. You can have your fingers out of the way. Okay, come down on that one. Okay, we're getting there. That's going off a little. Right, down there. Okay, widen that up. Let's cut these down. So one, two, one, two, four, four cuts. It's a while, doesn't it? It's certainly warmer now. Easy when you get into that corner. I suppose another thing would be um, as we're working out this um, live stream on YouTube. Uh, the there is software so if anyone else does this and is uh, starting out on youtube and you know of a good software that allows you to stream and record really appreciate you letting us know about it and what you think of it because that would be helpful i know that's totally different to woodwork but uh it's helpful for this but whereas this just streams, we're currently streaming straight on to YouTube and downloading it afterwards and editing, which I suppose is fine. I haven't done it before. Terrific. And I'm looking at my notes and I'm sweating. Um, Level there. Yeah. Nothing bad. Close, close, close. Yeah. Getting there. This is probably going to hit. I'm going to make sure the cut isn't too deep at the back of the tenon saw blade, hits the timber and stops you going. Because I know I've done that before. I'm cutting it. I'm wondering, it's not going down because it won't go down past that blade, past the back of it. But this just fits. Great. I'd like to see that come through nicely. Leave it in there. No, we don't. Let's level that up again. To have our saw level. I'm going to get in there. Run that up. 
to do and not trap my finger in there. All right. Uh, comments. What was I going to say? enough. Yeah, indeed. Getting there. Yeah. A bit far in that one. I think one or two. That out. Uh -huh -huh. I'll stay in so like, Yeah, what are we at? I'm getting there. If we get these cut out tonight and started on the um, mortise, that'll be good. Good going. Right, let's pop that in there. You know what you could do as well? Sometimes I would say, if you're working on this and you're a bit unsure of your angles, get yourself a clamp as well as your vise. And what you can do, pop that in the vise. Let's look at the top. <coughs> I'm going to drink a bit of water. And what you can do is you could line up. Oh, I see. Ah, yeah. Um, let's get that in there now. What you could do is um, get yourself a bit of scrap. Oh, we've got a bit of skippy round. Okay, terrific. So if we are able to see that up top, we can see that I've got this in the vise and that, yeah, groovy. Got that in the vise. We've got a bit of software giving you a bit of a shake around there, but that's, that's what it does. Put uh a scrap bit of timber up to your line there if you're not that confident on doing your lines just put that up to your line put the blade up to it and cut down on that line and that will keep your lines for you yep oops there you go There, right, there, right, there, right. Leave it there. Get that out with the chisel and run it through there. Oops. And that, look at that. Nice sharp chisel, takes that little bit out. But I went a fraction of that line right on it there should have let a little left a little bit more in but that i wouldn't worry which is uh is something to consider when the tolerance what kind of tolerance have you got on this certainly if you're studying it you would be a fine to work on that within one mil okay within a mil of it that's all right that could be. joinery is like one to three mil carpentry is about five mil i'm going to put this down this end and put that timber on there again because that actually was a bit helpful Just get that started. Sometimes it's useful. Use whatever you got around you. 
Certainly clamps. Clamps are always handy. Get in there now. Make that tight as we can. I want that over that line so I can clean that up. There. There. Tight. Great. If that was a helpful tip to you, let me know. If you've watched this far. <laughs> See, one bit out, two bit out. Keep those, they could be wedges, and the other things they could be are wall plugs. Oh, they need the right, put that out, and that out, and that goes there. That goes there. Oh, no. I'm happy with that fiber getting cut. There's a little fibers in there. Oh, I don't know if the top can zoom in. Yeah, I can zoom in probably there. You can see those little fibers that come out, which is nice. That's it. Take this one out first. Put our clamp over there. On the saw, that one out. Still see the line, just about. But I've gone a fraction out there, so we'll tidy that up. And then let's get down on this one. So let's use our all the tools we've available. Go and go for the Try square. Put this on that shoulder in there. I'm gonna start cutting that out. So I want to try and keep those shoulders square all the way around as much as I can. Out. Oh, how close you can zoom in on that one. So you can get a little off of that there. That. Yeah, oh, how satisfying it is just to take that tiny little peeling out. It's great. <laughs> Love that. That only comes with a good, sharp chisel. All right, we are moving along. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, see that. Terrific. And I'm going to start this way. Oh, I should have kept over that line. So, oh, that sounds good. Uh, so, in case you joined us late, we are on a live session just to demonstrate how much focus you need when you're doing your work by hand. I do, anyway. I do. And I think um, you're learning this. It helps to give yourself the time to work on it, on just this work. But it's quite enjoyable to get lost in it as well. All right, so we have two tenons. Tenon there, yep, and there. So let's check that out uh, above whilst we have it there. Now, I don't like knocking my tools against one another because that blade is sharp. That's nice and sharp. And if it hits metal, it's just going to get blunt. I don't want to, obviously, it'll get blunt with the timber as well, but we want to keep it as sharp as we can. You don't chuck them down, hit it off another piece of metal. Uh, watch what you're doing and keep the place tidy as you go along. Then 
Then, 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 let's lay this out. Get our face top. Oh, I'm after knocking something out of the way. Get the face in the top there. And we're going to cut this down in a moment. I'm good with that little bit in there. And we want to see that this is square. So let's square that up. There it is. And on that, we can then put this down here. And we've got our lines coming through. And this one will slot in up here. And when that gets a little pressure on it, it's going to bend it down. So we'll take that little out, hit it there. We're on our lines right there. That's hunky dory. Now, if I'd have been smarter, I would have marked that square straight up there, which I did earlier. And I'm going to tell you that I purposely left it like this because I want to show you an error. If we made an error, we can get round it. We'll put this one up here, and I very rarely do this on the inside, but this time I'm going to bring that down to the inside. We got our blade there, and there we go. So I'm bringing my squid in there. I'll bring that down here. Put my arm on it, loosen that blade up out of that combination square, drop it in there. When I've got that, I know now that's 45. And this is a, a nice line up here. So I've got my head in the way. Uh, if you have any comments, Put them in the comment box and I'll try and answer it in this session. If not, I can answer it afterwards. <laughs> Comments are always, always helpful. That one we square across. From our face, off of that line there. And then run this back down, flip it, put that in here. I want to see this line a fraction there. And that's a bit of a tricky one. And bring it down to here, loosen that blade, drop that in there. And now I will get a line through there. Mm. I'll mark my waist. That's going to get cut off. And the reason why I can leave this one out is because this timber is going to slot in here. That's fine. But this won't with here. So we have to square this off, drop that down here. That will be fun. So let's cut that out. And I'm aware that this evening. We are about, um, uh, it's always an hour long. We're um, not far off it, but we're almost ready to mark up our mortises. And get that cut out here. Yeah, we can go from the front if you wish. So I'm going to try and avoid damaging the shoulders I've put in there. Tighten that up. Sturdy. And pop that in there. Out you come. Got our chisel. Put that in there. Go. So, so far, one, two, four hours to prepare this. Had a few techie issues, but it's all by hand. And I think it's going all right. There haven't been major errors yet that we have to redo the timber. 
that and we see from here we're going to have an angle bracket so this will hold up a shelf or it could hold up a canopy if you have two of them outside a door and we can then put designs on this afterwards hold up a large shelf and let's mark out our let's mark out our mortise so let's check it out from top because this is not your typical mortise as in we have this one we've got the bottom and top now when we look at the timber this way this being a bracket the brace is thinner than the top and the side so when we had our let's get you over there when we take our combination marking gauge we'll set it to the 12 mil chisel space here but it will no longer be running off the face of this we'll run off the edge of these both the same and work it out the center of those so we'll take a 12 mil chisel and we're going to set this one up i'm going to we could probably possibly zoom in here sometimes the way to get this sorted can be you want to make sure that that chisel is um no it's not going to get in there is it i'm afraid uh we'll have to come out zoom out a little uh, the um if you are putting your chisel in here just be careful it doesn't if it is secure i am always catching my fingers on these pins and at that we will loosen up the block get my head out of the way get loosen up that block and we're going to turn this to this pin's fixed we're going to make this pin not, uh, the size of that chisel the width of it and when you're doing this it doesn't go to the width of the full chisel it goes to the the pins must be the top of the pins i'm not explaining this too well am i the top of those pins not the base of the pins must be the width of that chisel and that's i only get a pretty damn precise i'm all right with that that's as good as i'm going to get it there because i don't have enough hands otherwise what you're doing is you're holding that putting it up here and adjusting it as well put that on there and adjust it here now that's what we got there right on those pins the top of them we're okay with that now then this is the bit that can't be rushed one of the bits we've got our faces here and we want to find the center of that timber so let's take them apart let's check that from the front we'll take them out and we lift that out there so that's gone up there so that just comes out that's nice and steady in there but it's not overly tight that it's going to bust those out and with that we get ourselves our scrap timber and our scrap timber is the same width which is better to use that scrap same dimensions entirely and we're going down on the face side of these and this is where we want to get the center of it so we'll put our scrap timber in here face edge that's hugely important at this stage going back to what we did at the very beginning we've got our face side and our edge side and i want the edge side on my right hand side so that when i take my marking gauge the block here on this stem can stay on that face and i can find the center so if we check it out from the top I'll get this done just before we head off. We've checked this out there. I'm going to 
put this up to here and eyeball where that center is. Now it's about there. I like to check it, put a couple of marks in here. Let's see that a little better with a pencil maybe. There's my marks in there. And then we'll spin that over and we'll put another couple of marks and they are not center. So we just take it back and adjust it over a little bit more. Lovely. Just that one. Another couple of notches in there. Mark them. I'm marking them. I can see them. You probably can't. There. That's good. I'm happy that that's in there now. So when I mark that off, the edge side, if there's a slight error in the timber or on the pins or anything, but I've marked everything from the edge, then they should still all line up the same distance. Then we get rid of our scrap. And I am aware of that. 56, 856, 857. And we'll pop this in here again. Drop you in nice and steady. Line up our markings. And on this one, we're going to outline. We're going to outline our tenon. We're putting a mark here and a mark here. And whilst that's there, we're going to line our tenon up on the other side as well, putting a mark there. And this could be sand, uh, planed off afterwards and one here. And we will transcribe those marks across to where we want to cut that out. So this is our 45. I've got to take it off the face. So we have that in place there. We want to run that through here. That one. This one's a square. That's going to go to that edge. 45 off the face up here. Let's run that up to our edge and this one as well. A little bigger. So when we flip this over, we'll be able to see that that now, I'm doing it a slight angle for you, that now, we can take our pencil line here on that through there. That's one side. I should have done it on both sides because it's actually going to go all the way through. These are through mortise and tenons. It needs to be tightened up to that one. We're going to look on that one. We do. It's going to go through. I'm going to have to lose my line. I should really put this in place. Watch it. Good. Okay on that one. Okay. So how are we doing on time? Okay, two mins, that will get it just marked up. So next week, get the um, chisels out and start cutting. Let's finish marking up. That's gonna run right through there. That's gonna go through here. Being conscious to keep the body, I call this the body, that's the blade of your mar combination marking square against your face or edge marking. These are terrific marking up too. They really are. You do um, so many things. Let's hold that up there. That one's going to go across here. And that one's going to square up across there. It's going to be fun cutting those out. So that's going to get cut out. This one, we've got those two inner ones, and the inside ones, they're going to go squared off our edge side. Better off making them slightly small, 
is we can make them bigger later. No point in making it those lines bigger than they need to be. And that's going to go through there. So on our edge, let's get this done. I'll run over a moment. We're done on that one. Smashing. And that's our waist. That is tight. We're going to need a proper little one in there. All right. Let's check it out from front. So you either watch it live or if you watched it um, afterwards or part of it, put something in the comments. Let us know what you think. And uh, we'll aim to get it done in our final session of our live sessions. And you'll have a nice bracket and something to work on. Cheerio. Thank you.